I, I talk to people all the time and I'm like, they're like, yeah, man, I got goals. It's all up in here and everything else. I'm like, well, tell me one of them. They can't even come up with it. You know, they can't even realize. So if, if you've got a target that you can't see, how in the world are you going to hit it? You have to be able to visually see where you're going. And then once you're able to do that, just like you, you said to me earlier, then you can work backwards with a plan of action that, okay, 12 months from now, I want to save $100,000 or save $10,000, whatever it is. All right, so what do I have to do monthly to make that happen? What do I have to do quarterly, monthly, weekly, daily? Mm -hmm. All right, so I've got a seven-step goal-setting process that I teach people, and you were one of the people that I taught. And in that seven-step goal-setting process, you can really start to unveil all the most important areas of your life, your health, your finances, your relationships, your career. All of these different areas are so important. And then once you, once you understand what areas you need to uh, achieve in, you can start creating a plan. And, I and here we go, guys. Thing, most people say, damn, he's got a process. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of The Process. Damn, he's got a process. All right, guys, welcome to another episode of The Process. I'm here with Chris Patterson. He is the CEO of Interchanges, an agency that's done, I think, about $1.4 billion in sales, guys. So we're very blessed to have him here with us today, and he's going to drop some knowledge. We're going to talk about a little bit about goal setting and kind of, you know, just what it takes to be an entrepreneur at, at this level. So um, Chris is an amazing guy, and I'm going to let him kind of introduce himself and take it from here. Uh, thank you so much, David. And as you know, you're one of my favorite people. So I'm just, I'm honored to be here and love to discuss whatever you'd like to discuss today. Awesome. That's my treat. Awesome, man. So let's talk about interchanges. I mean, you guys, I mean, how long have you guys been around? So we actually, I actually started the, the business out of my wife's dining room uh, 18 years ago. Okay. And uh, the way I know it was my wife's dining room, she, she kept saying, you got to get the heck out of my dining room. <laughs> back then dude i had like this 300 megahertz computer like the uh the monitor alone was the size of a t like a tv it was yeah, yeah. it was like it's like a little mini refrigerator on my desk so she wanted me out of that she wanted me out of that dining room hard so oh man 18 years later i got out of her dining room here i am now i'll tell you man one one point four billion dollars in sales that's not a light number. That's not something that's easily to get. That's not easily achievable. So how are you able to kind of do that looking back from 18 years? You so, know? Yeah, so let me clarify that a little bit. It's not $1.4 that I've generated uh, for myself. It's $1.4 billion that we've generated for our customers combined over the years. Yeah. So, you know, we're really proud of that because I think, you know, most agencies, they're so focused on, you know, am I a six-figure, seven-figure, eight-figure agency? And I think that's kind of the wrong mentality because really we're here to serve. We're here to make a difference. We're here to impact. People are trusting us with their hard-earned money. Yep. So we've always tried to keep track of how much money are we actually generating for our customers? Are we actually doing a good job? Because if we can keep their best interests in mind, everything else follows from there. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we've been keeping track and you know, it's just, it's creeped up. You know, we've, we've been fortunate to have really great customers over, over time. And uh, we've just been generating revenue for these clients year over year over year over year for a long, long time. Well, I mean, I would say you guys have over a billion reasons, you know, why you're successful because absolutely the client comes first. And the fact that you guys keep track of that and that's a, you know, Man, congratulations. All I got to say, congratulations. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. So tell me, what kind of clients do you guys work best with? Like, who do you guys love to work with? Um, usually anybody with a high ticket product or a service. So for example, you know, if you're, you're a home builder or you build pools or you sell cars, you know, if you've got a, a high ticket price of, you know, five, ten thousand dollars $10,000 per item, uh, attorneys, you know, are, are a really good target for us too. So Anybody that really has a high ticket product or service is a good candidate for us. Um, we know that our systems that we put in place for those kinds of people will work tremendously and the return on investment is sick. Mm. So that's our whole goal is we just want to get them a massive return on investment. We never want them to leave us. 
So that's what we try to do. Let's touch on that a little bit because I feel like a lot of people throw that word around. They say, hey, I do lead gen. Hey, we get you an ROI. But um, I know because I know you personally that you guys have a system of calculating that ROI and that you make sure that, hey, every dollar that someone spends with you, there's going to be at least four, five, six dollars on the other side of it, on the other end, right? Yeah. So assuming the company we're working with is open to share that information, which most of them, you know, we earn their trust and eventually they're like, most of the reason they don't, they don't want to tell us how much money they're making from us is because they're scared we're going to raise our prices. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I, I kind of settle them down and I'm like, look, man, we're really trying to do this to make sure we're doing a great job for you. Mm -hmm. You know, we can lock in our prices. It's not about us uh, gouging you or anything like that. It's really, we just want to know how well we're doing. Yeah. So uh, they, they usually open up and we'll either work with the accounting department or work through spreadsheets that are mutual. And uh, you know, we'll go on a Google sheet. We'll see how many leads. They start telling us how many of those are closed, what the value of those are. So, you know, we've got systems and processes we put put in place over the years to make sure that everybody is on top of their game. And that's one of my favorite sayings, by the way, is be on top of your business. <laughs> I come in and I tell my employees on a regular basis. I tell my vendors. I tell my customers. I'm like, look, you got to be on top of your vis business. It's your company. Yeah, so no, let's you stay on top of it so we can all do the right thing. Yeah. Now, um, you know, today we're going to flex our muscles a little bit. We're going to get into goal setting. And uh, there you go. <laughs> and, uh, because, we, because of our relationship, I know some things about you that I think are just tremendous. Um, I know that each and every day your team – they kind of set goals and they share them with the rest of the team, right? Yes. So what we call that is the top five priorities list. Mm -hmm. So every single day I can go to my phone, even if I'm not at the office and I can get, I can get a, a list of every action that my team is going to take that day. Mm -hmm. And all I expect them to do is send me in their top five priorities. So I think it was general Schwarzkopf that said a long time ago that he didn't expect his, military to do anything more than three to five important things a day. But when you start planning it like that, okay, just imagine um, whoever's listening out there, you start going, okay, I'm going to set five major priorities that's going to make my life better every day. What that turns into is 25 priorities a week. If you're only doing this five days a week, mm -hmm. so 25 priorities a week, I think if you multiply it out over a year, it's 240 priorities in a year. Tell me your life can't get better with 240 priorities. Tell me your business can't get better with 240 priorities. Now I'm talking about things that are going to move the needle. You know, hey, I'm going to do some marketing today. I'm going to reach out to some existing clients today. I'm going to follow up with people that, um, you know, haven't heard from me in a little while. Those are priorities that are going to move the needle eventually, right? Yeah. But often we're too short-sighted. So I make sure that my team because you know as well as I do, David, you can have an employee that can do, you know, supposedly eight hours of work or nine hours of work in three hours. Yeah. And then what do they do for the rest of the time? You know, they're on Facebook or they're playing around, those kinds of things. So all I expect for my team to do, send me those top five priorities so we can keep moving, moving the business forward. Yeah. And I love how you broke it down that these priorities, they're profit producing activities. They're not, I'm going to check the emails, right? That yeah, they're going to do that anyway. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's things that actually matters. And yeah. uh, so first, guys, if you're going to implement this into your business, first you need to define what those are, what are actual priorities, because you don't want it to be like, I'm going to go to the bathroom is one of my priorities. Like, and, you know, it's as funny as it sounds, almost every new person that I bring on and tell them, okay, I want your top five priorities, they send me over all kinds of stuff like, oh, I'm going to, Check the email. Like you said, you know, it's all kinds of little silly stuff that doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Look, you're, you're going to end up doing those things anyways. So what I want to know is what you can do proactively in your mind to make tomorrow better. To me, that's a priority. So my team learns that pretty quickly. Yeah. All right. So let's get into the goal setting. Yeah. Now, before we do, I'm going to share with everyone a little story. Um, you know, I was blessed to be able to um, – to um, have Chris kind of share, share some of his strategies, share some of his techniques with me. I believe it was like in February, Chris. Yeah, it was some, somewhere in the beginning of the year. Beginning of the year. And um, he shared with me the Zig Ziglar Performance Planner. And I keep this thing next to me on a daily basis. 
And um, we spoke about kind of kind of what those KPIs, your key performance indicators are, what your priorities are. And um, what, we, what we do is every, every single day, every single week, every single month, you know, everything is kind of like mapped out and everything is leading towards your end goal for the year. So, um, you know, Chris introduced me to this and I've been using it ever since and we've seen tremendous growth and I just, you know, I feel very blessed and, you know, I just want to share that story, you guys, because what he's about to share with you works. I know it works because we do it and we, we're bearing the fruit from it. So, yeah, I'm going to shut up. That's great. I, I should probably give you a little bit of background how I got involved with Mr. Ziegler. Um, for those of you who don't know, there's probably a lot of young people that have never heard the name Zig Ziegler before. But if you could think Gary V, Tony Robbins, uh, Lewis Howes, all wrapped up into one person. That's who Zig Ziglar was. This guy was a dynamo back in the 80s, 90s. He was just uh, an amazing human being, full of integrity, great character, honest. And uh, by God's grace, I was, I was blessed with being mentored by him for 12 months. Mm. And uh, it really changed my mind. It changed my life. It changed everything. So it was a chance encounter. I met him in Plano, Texas. Uh, I was a personal trainer back then, lifting weights, and I said, look, I'll train you three, hour, three hours a week for free. I'll work on your physical health if you'll spend one hour a week for free working on my mental health. Mm. And that's how I convinced Zig Ziglar to mentor me. But what I gained out of that was so much, so much more impactful over the years. Um, I've become a Ziglar Legacy certifica- uh, certified trainer where I can teach people goal setting and achievement, building winning relationships, helping them with their self-esteem, growing their businesses, all of those types of things. So uh, probably what I spend most of my time doing right now is coaching people how to get to the next level of their life, both personally and professionally. And one of the ways that we do that is through goal setting and achievement. Um, I think, I think David, 80% of America admits they have no goals. And then 16% admits they have goals, but they haven't written them down. And then, and then I think it's 3% have written them down, but they don't review them. Oh. And then 1% has a written goal setting process that they review every day and they take action on every day. So guess who's making the money out there? <laughs> <laughs> this isn't rocket surgery. You know, it's, it's if you can identify where your target is, you know, and, I talk to people all the time and I'm like, they're like, yeah, man, I got goals. It's all up in here and everything else. I'm like, well, tell me one of them. They can't even come up with it. You know, they can't even realize. So if if you've got a target that you can't see, how in the world are you going to hit it? You have to be able to visually see where you're going. And then once you're able to do that, just like you, you said to me earlier, then you can work backwards with a plan of action that, okay, 12 months from now, I want to, save $100,000 or save $10,000, whatever it is. All right, so what do I have to do monthly to make that happen? What do I have to do quarterly, monthly, weekly, daily? Mm -hmm. All right, so I've got a seven-step goal-setting process that I teach people, and you were one of the people that I taught. And in that seven-step goal-setting process, you can really start to unveil all the most important areas of your life, your health, your finances, your relationships, your career. All of these different areas are so important. And then once you, once you understand what areas you need to uh, achieve in, you can start creating a plan. And I use the uh, performance planner just like you are. And uh, by the way, if anybody out there wants one of those things, I think on the website at Ziegler, it's $49.95. But hit me up with uh, an email and I'll get it to you half price. I don't, I'm not making any money on it. It's just something I'd like to do for David's people. So hit me up at CEO at interchanges.com. And I'll get you one of those things sent out to you. It's a it's a fantastic planner. Uh, that's awesome, man. Maybe we'll um we'll drop a link to your email when we um when we kind of distribute this this video. So guys, I mean, definitely take Chris up on that offer. Um, it would literally change your life. You know, I I I'm blessed to be around a lot of successful people. And the number one thing between a six figure business or or a six figure earner and a seven figure earner is mindset. And the way you change your mindset is by setting actionable goals. Um, you know, I was having a conversation the other day and someone said to me, like, do you know what the purpose, the reason why we set goals? And um, the answer was, is to be appropriate in the moment. 
And um, I'm going to say it again, to be appropriate in the moment. And that was just so profound because so many times throughout the day, we get distracted. We get emails, we get phone calls, um, we get Trump on Facebook and Twitter and Miley Cyrus and all this stuff. And um, we kind of, it pulls away from what we need to do to really move that needle, to really advance ourselves, advance our business. And when you have your top three priorities, and Chris made a great point, you never want to go over three or four. Um, I like to do like, I always say like, what's your one thing, the one thing we need to do today. And um, for us in our business, we have that down, we have that dialed in. We know if we're hitting this one thing, everything else falls into place. So do yourselves a favor, get this planner, contact Chris, he'll take care of you. He's a man of his word. Uh, by the way, um, I'd like to offer something else. Right now, I usually can, can help about 12 people uh, per month from my coaching, uh, my coaching processes. And right now, I've only got about eight. So I'm willing, if anybody's interested in a free 30-minute coaching session, hit me up on the same email at ceo at interchanges.com. I'd be more than happy to give a free 30-minute coaching session, see how I can help you get to the next level. No, we'll have DRock put it up there, like CEO in the changes.com. Yeah, it's going to be right here or <laughs> here. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Oh, man. So, like, let, let's talk about, let's look at Chris 18 years ago and Chris today. Um, just kind of let us know, like, that progression it took. I mean, I mean, every, guys, Chris is well off. I want to say, you know, the exact numbers and all that stuff, but he's well off. And um, a lot of people look at you and say, wow, this is a very successful guy. But I know that it didn't start there. It took a lot of work. And you've always been very open about sharing that story. So I would love for you to kind of just divulge that to the audience. Yeah, man. I mean, uh, definitely no silver spoon, golden spoon, platinum. No, no, no spoons for me, man. I had, to, I had to create a spoon and feed myself. That's for sure. But, uh, well, you know, one of the most common things that people say is, you know, Chris, where do you get your motivation? And usually motivation comes from one of two things. It's either inspiration or desperation. Mm. I was both. Dude, I was broke. I'm talking like $60,000 in debt. Mm. I just bought a home. Uh, my wife was six months pregnant. And all of a sudden, I got let go from my job. I was working at America Online. I got let go with, with 1,200 other people. Oh, wow. And I've always been kind of a positive person, you know, mainly because of what Zig taught me and those kinds of things. And I remember walking out of there and it, of course it hit me because I mean, I was, I really needed the money. I needed that job. And I walked out and as soon as I hit the staircase, every day I would ask myself before I would leave, did you give it your best today? And I, every time I stepped on that staircase, that was my indicator. Did you give it your best? And uh, I remember walking out, getting fired, and I hit that staircase, and I looked up, and I was just like, man, I did not deserve to get let go. But immediately, I changed my mindset, and I said, this must be a promotion. <laughs> this must be a promotion. There's no other reason. Nothing else makes sense to me. I didn't deserve to get let go. I was doing my job. I was number one out of 3,000 other representatives, three years in a row, won the presidential award, had all these accolades but here I am getting let go. So I changed my mindset. This must be a promotion. So I went home, walked through the door. My wife said, Oh my gosh, what are you doing home so early? You know, da da da. I said, Oh honey, I got great news. <laughs> <laughs> so she said, she said, oh, great. What's the good news? I said, well, I said, I just got a promotion. And she said, what do you mean? And I said, well, I don't exactly know how I'm going to be promoted, but I have faith that I will. And I just got let go from America online. Now she's six months pregnant. She's already emotional. She breaks down on the floor right there and starts crying, you know, which is understandable. But that was really the beginning of my journey to become an entrepreneur and stay an entrepreneur. And, uh, you know, I was desperate and I was inspired and I just made a way. Again, thankfully, I had all the principles from Ziegler. I understood the goal setting process. I understood the, the performance planner. So I just got busy, man. I just, I'm, I don't have time to cry or whine or worry. I just got to get busy. And uh, I did. And I, I started out with a, I bought a little website builder. All you got to do is put the logo in the top right hand corner and pick if you want a restaurant or a shoe store or whatever. <laughs> That's kind of how I started. And I was going door to door selling websites back in the day. And, uh, you know, here I am, you know, almost two decades later, 
and we're still going strong. So, yeah, it didn't start out with all roses, brother. It was tough. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Wow, man. So, if you can give advice to um, anyone watching this right now, one piece of advice, uh, if they want to grow themselves as an individual, they want to grow their business, um, what do they need to do? What do they need to invest in? Where do they need to spend their time to really get to that next level? Yeah, I, I look back at my career and the number one thing that I've done over and over and over again is invest into myself. Mm -hmm. So I've made it a hard and fast rule every year to invest at least 5% of my total income back into me. So whether that's, you know, I learned how to become a speaker a few years ago and I went, I went and got some training workshops to learn how to become a better speaker. Um, you know, investing into digital marketing. I've invested a lot of money with a friend that you and I both well know, uh, Billy Jean. But, you know, again, I say the word invest, not give. You know, giving money, you can lose. Investing money, you make. Yeah. So, you know, if you can have mentors, coaches, um, that's why I love what I do for coaching. I've, I have yet have brought on anybody that has not gotten a huge return on investment by investing with me to help them get to the next level. And, you know, most people are really smart, David. They can figure out how to get to the next level on their own. The advantage of having a coach or a mentor, however, is you can speed up the process times three, times four, times five. Mm -hmm. So for me, speed's important. You know, I got three coaches right now and I'm looking for a fourth. <laughs> you know, I want to move fast. I want to move fast. So hopefully that helps answer your question. And it's funny because um, you never want to invest in someone who isn't investing in themselves, you know? So if you're going to take on a coach or a mentor, make sure that person also has a coach or a mentor, or at least has in the past. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. I also don't take any advice from fat personal trainers mm -hmm. or broke financial planners or, or people who have never been married trying to give me marriage advice. So yeah, if they've been there and done that, then those are the people that you want to go after and seek their advice for sure. Definitely. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, Chris, would you mind sharing with us just those seven um, goal setting principles, maybe like going through each one? I know I'm kind of putting you on the spot here. No, it's, it's no problem. Just give me a minute. I'm going to grab my, my book here. Always yeah. close by. Got to have that performance planner, people. There it is. And we didn't set this up, did we, David? Not. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let me just go through step one. And I know this is very general. I actually do teach a pretty in-depth uh, goal setting and achievement program. So if you're interested in learning more about that, again, hit me up on that same email address. But there's seven major steps. The first one is to identify your goal. So let me give you an example. Um, I wanna get a better education. All right, that might be a goal somebody has. So write that down. How do I, what do I wanna identify it as? Boom, there's your goal. Number two is what are my benefits of reaching this goal? So it's tremendously important to write down the why you're doing something, yeah. all right? So if you just write, I want a better education, but you don't really have a why behind it. So, you know, your why's might be something like broaden and increase my opportunities, improve my self image, in increase my relationships, improve security and knowledge, all of those kinds of things. Yeah, like be a role model for your son or your daughter. Yeah, because how many people start goals and then just stop them? two months in, two weeks in, three weeks, whatever. But if you have a strong enough understanding of why I'm really doing this in the first place, chances are you won't quit. All right, so that's step two. Number three is what major obstacles do I have to climb to reach this goal? And this is really planning in advance for things that can go wrong, mm. all right? So people start out working out in the gym in January, they're out of there by February. What they didn't anticipate is it's gonna be painful. What they didn't anticipate is it's gonna take time. What they didn't anticipate is I might need some help. Yeah. Well, if you start uh, figuring out what those obstacles are in advance, then you can get, you can get past them when they pop up. I, so I number know, um, let me just jump in here. I know from talking with you that like, if you set goals and they never change and you're hitting all of them, you did a terrible job. You need to have room in there, some flexibility because mm -hmm. things change, things get tough, but that needs to be a part of the process. Like, Hey, you know, if my goal is to lose 10 pounds, um, you know, you got to put it in there like, hey, if this happens, you know, it doesn't mean I didn't, um, I didn't reach my goal. It's now I have to find a way to make sure I still get to that 10 pounds, you know? Correct. So we don't ever change our goal, but we do change the plan of action to get there. Yeah. All right. So 
you know, one of the big things for my company, just to give you a real life example, I was just on the phone with my team this morning talking to them about it, is we have to generate inbound leads. I'm obsessed with it right now. And I've failed and failed and failed and failed all this year, 2018. Not that we haven't generated any leads, we just haven't generated the amount of leads that we're gonna be happy with. So, did I quit? Did I give up? Heck no, I'm just finding other avenues to get to that goal. Yeah. And I just keep on branching myself out. So again, in goal setting, it's tremendously important. Identify what your goal is, know that there's gonna be obstacles, and then figure out a way to adjust so you can get to, get to your end, end means anyway. Um, I'll rip through the, a few of these other ones here, David. Uh, step four, skills or knowledge required to reach this goal. That's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, number five, individuals, groups, companies, and organizations to work with to reach this goal. Yeah. So uh, I love the quote, if you see a turtle at the top of a fence post, chances are he didn't get there by himself, you know, because those of you out there that are smart, you know, turtles can't climb. <laughs> so somebody had to put that thing up on top of the fence post. So who can you get as part of your dream team to help you achieve all these goals in your life? You've got to be able to have people in your life that can get you to the next level, get you to the next step and stage and give you wise, sage advice to get there. So make sure you've got the right people in your life to help you with these goals. Uh, number six is a plan of action to reach this goal. Now, this is your initial plan of action where you're just writing down, okay, I think what I need to do first is A and then B and then C and then D. Write those things down so you understand how to achieve them. And then last but not least is what is your completion date? So you want to be, the more specific you are in goal setting, the higher your probability that you're actually going to achieve them. So I highly recommend that you guys write down your goals and have a completion date at the end of it. That, that's powerful. That's a very powerful part of the process. Um, you know, I read somewhere, um, I think it's called like, um, like hyperbolic, uh, it, it, it escapes me, but the principle of it is like, if I say, Chris, I'm going to give you $100 today, I'm going to give you $200 tomorrow guaranteed. If you don't take the $100 today, everyone's going to take that $200, right? I mean, it's like you're going to double your money. But if I say, hey, Chris, and just change the time frame where I say, Chris, you can either have $100 today or $200 a year later, no one takes that. Right. No, it's doubling their money. And even though it's guaranteed, and if you look at it, man, think of any investment where you can double your money in a year, pretty soon you'll be a billionaire, right? Yeah. No one says yes to that. It's because the farther away, um, the farther away um the goal is, it's it's harder for you to actually keep that and keep it relevant. So that's why it's so important to work backwards and break it down into quarterly goals, monthly goals, weekly goals, and then daily goals. Because if you're hitting your KPIs every single day, you're going to get to where you need to be. A hundred percent. And, you know, I think the the real principle there is that we have to, we have to be patient mm -hmm. and we have to sacrifice in order for us to reach our goals. It's funny on, on YouTube, there's a, a really great video called the marshmallow test. And I think it was one of the Ted talks. Mm -hmm. And what they did is they wanted to figure out which kids were going to achieve in life and which ones were not. And the, the number one thing that the kids that were going to achieve did is they could, they could discipline themselves to not have immediate gratification. So mm -hmm. the marshmallow test was simple. Uh, we, we put one marshmallow on the table. We leave that kid in a room for 15 minutes with that marshmallow. And if he does not eat it, he gets two marshmallows. <laughs> if he does eat it, he gets one. Mm. And it is hilarious, man. You guys got to look this up. But um, these kids are, you know, they're, they're smelling it. <laughs> <laughs> they're licking it, you know, they're doing everything they can to try it, but not eat it. Some of them just cave and are like, oh, you know, they eat the whole thing. But, you know, I talk to my kids all the time and I'm like, listen, you know, immediate gratification is the enemy. Yeah. You know, hey, oh, I made a hundred bucks, man, I'm going to go buy some shoes. Mm, why don't you invest that hundred dollars? Why don't you figure out, turn that hundred into 120? You, you see what I'm fun. saying? Yep. People are so quick to get themselves in debt. They're so quick to you know, I remember this and my wife would kill me if I told you, but I'm going to tell you anyway. I remember after we built our home, um, one of my major goals was to pay it off. I wanted to be debt free with my home. And it took years and years and years of self-discipline. 
trust me, there was a lot of trips I wanted to go on. There was a lot of cars I wanted to buy. There was all kinds of stuff. Mm. And my wife was just like, I want a pool. I want a pool. I want a pool. And I kept saying, honey, I'm, I'm not getting you a pool until I pay off the home. Mm. And she would get upset. She's like, well, my family had a pool and our kids love the pool. And she was just selling me constantly. Right. But I was strong enough mentally to go, you know what? You're going to get the nicest pool you've ever seen, but you're going to have to wait until I pay off this home. Yeah. And eventually I paid off the home and trust me, she got her pool. She got <laughs> a really nice pool, but I bought that pool and I, I was debt free. Mm. You see? So I, that's no different than a marshmallow. It's like, yeah, I want the marshmallow. I want the pool. Okay. Well, do you want a one marshmallow or do you want two? Do you want a okay pool or do you want a really nice one? And I think if we can discipline ourselves in life, we'll, uh, we'll eventually figure out that immediate gratification is the enemy. And the more patient we can be, the higher the probability of success. Love it, man. Love it. Uh, well, Chris, thank you so much for the sage wisdom today. Um, guys, we're going to put the email up one more time. Um, if, please do yourself a favor. Get that Zig Ziglar Performance Planner. Chris is giving you guys for 50% off at cost. And also, if you want to better yourself, you want to get yourself to the next level, this is a great, great man. Um, I vouch for his coaching. I know what he does and how he help people. And um, you know, some of the people that are friends of, friends of mine, you know, they've also gotten advice and take coaching coaching from Chris, and they've always had they always had positive things to say. So definitely check them out. And Chris, thank you so much for being on the show. It's another episode of the process, people. My pleasure, brother. Fantastic interview. I appreciate you so much, David. Have a great day. Take care. See you, bro.